Now who says marshmallows only come in one flavor? The great thing about homemade marshmallows are you can make them just about any flavor and today's coffee version is delicious. Okay, so first we're going to start off with some delicious coffee. Now you can use any type of coffee that you like. You can use mine, which is fresh beans, or you can also use instant coffee. It's just whatever you have on hand and whatever you prefer. So all up, we want three quarters of a cup of espresso or strong coffee. So if you're using beans like me, you're gonna to have to make a few shots. But if you use an instant coffee, just make a very strong, but three quarters of a measured cup worth. And once you've made out your three quarters of a cup of coffee, simply place it into the fridge for about half an hour to an hour, because you want it to be completely cooled down. And to ensure you don't miss any of my fantastic recipes, just make sure you click on that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification here and just click on send me notifications on this channel and save. And that way you'll never miss a single video of mine ever again. Because I've had so many people tell me how they're just not showing up in the subscription box anymore. And of course, don't forget to thumbs up this video. And that's honestly all I'll ask you to do, just to stay up to date with all my videos and you won't be spammed with email, you'll only get an email when I upload a new video. Okay, so next we're going to use a mixing bowl. Now I'm using a stand mixer. And trust me, when it comes to making marshmallows, it is so much easier. But you can also use a hand mixer later on as well. So into the bowl, I have our three quarters of a cup of coffee. Now I'm going to pour in about half a cup's worth. And next I'm going to use some unflavored gelatin. So we're just going to sprinkle that onto our cold coffee. And we're going to leave that for about 10 minutes. Give it a chance for that gelatin to soak up the coffee, which will also in turn make the gelatin nice and soft. Next, I've got a pot on the stove on a medium to high heat. So the first thing we're going to add is two cups of sugar. Now you'll be thinking, wow, that's a lot of sugar. Well, now you know exactly what marshmallows are. It's pretty much pure sugar. Then next, I'm going to add in some glucose syrup. It's also called corn syrup. So I'm going to add in two thirds of a cup of our syrup. and then the remaining last quarter of our coffee. So we're just going to continuously mix this until everything is well combined. Okay, so I'm going to use a candy thermometer and we want it to reach the soft ball stage, which is 240 degrees Fahrenheit or 110 degrees Celsius. So just simply place it onto the edge of the pot and just simply remove the pot from the stove once it reaches the desired temperature. Okay, so as you can see, it has just gone over actually. It goes up pretty fast and it takes a few minutes, so just take it straight off the heat. Okay, so as you can see, the gelatin has soaked in all that lovely coffee. So we're just going to add a beater attachment and just beat it on slow to start off with. And we're just going to slowly pour in our sugar mixture. You don't do too fast because this stuff is incredibly hot right now and it will actually stick to your skin and well, you don't want that. So as it starts to cool down, we can slowly raise the speed. And we're just gonna do this every minute or so. So basically we wanna Keep on beating this until it comes up nice and fluffy and it's completely cooled down. As you can see, it's starting to cool down because it's getting nice and fluffy and it's starting to turn a much paler color. So all up, it's going to take about 10 to 12 minutes until it gets to the right temperature, which is nice and cool. That's why I recommend a stand mixer, but you can use a hand mixer. Just obviously take up a seat, sit down and mix away for about 10, 12 minutes. Okay, so as you can see, it is nice and fluffy. 
So just before we place it into a container, we're going to add just a little bit of vanilla extract and to help enhance that flavor, just a little bit of salt. So just let that mix in completely and it's ready. And look at that, it's nice and fluffy and gooey. So we're just going to need a spatula just so we can get all the excess off the beater. Don't be afraid to taste test. Okay, so I've got a baking tray here. I've just lined it with some non-stick baking paper. So first of all, on the base, we're just going to sprinkle on some powdered sugar or icing sugar. This will just help prevent it from sticking because marshmallows are very, very sticky. And we're simply just going to place our marshmallow mixture onto our baking tray. Ooh, that looks so yummy, so gooey. So we're just gonna just even it out. Just we're gonna move quickly because it does, as I said, it is very sticky. Now it's up to you the size of the tray you want to use. You can have nice thick marshmallows or thin ones. When it comes to marshmallows, it makes no difference. You can have one big giant thick one. It just takes a little longer to cool down. Okay, so once done, we're going to give it an, an additional sprinkle with some more icing powdered sugar. And this will just help prevent the top from sticking. Okay, so all we have to do now is simply place this into the fridge for a, you know, a couple of hours, or you can even leave it at room temperature overnight. Okay, so I've had it setting for a few hours now, and as you can see, it is completely set. So we're just simply going to lift it up out of our baking tray. Now, as you can see, it's a bit sticky on the side. That's normal. Now, there's a few different ways you can cut it, but I found the best way is just to use a pizza cutter. So it's just so easy. You just roll it through and you can, it's up to you the size on how wide or thick that you like your marshmallows. But it works best because this stuff is, well, pretty sticky. So if you're using a knife, it, Trust me, use a pizza cutter. <laughs> and just look at how delicious that looks. Nice and fluffy. It's a perfect marshmallow. But there's only one way to see what they like and that's to give one a try. Mmm. Oh wow. That really is delicious. You have that natural marshmallowy taste, which is pretty much sugar. But when you mix that in with the coffee, the taste just really takes it up one big notch. So this is perfect as a side. You can have a square with your cup of coffee. It'll go down well, that's for sure. Always just a little treat now and then. Of course, try not to overindulge, but as with everything, it's all good in moderation, but these marshmallows just really do taste absolutely delicious. So whether you have it with coffee, without coffee, as a treat after dinner, or as a treat during the day, either way, they're going to taste simply delish. Now get those taste buds ready because there's no churn. Coffee ice cream only requires four simple ingredients. G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. There are three things on this planet that most people quick and agree that they will absolutely love. That's coffee, chocolate and ice cream. So let's stick them all together. So join me today as I make my version of it an espresso chocolate chip ice cream. So we're going to start this off with some fresh brewed coffee. Now if you don't have fresh brewed you can buy the instant if you like but honestly if you got fresh brewed do that because it just tastes so much better. And we're going to go for two shots of espresso coffee. Now whether you pre-ground your own or you buy it pre-ground from the shops either way we're going to need two shots worth
Okay, so once we've extracted our espresso, we're just going to let that cool down for about half an hour to 45 minutes, just so it's at room temperature. To make it even faster, feel free to place it into the fridge. Now, once our espresso is cooled in the fridge, we're going to pour it into a bowl. But don't forget, you can also use regular instant coffee, just dissolve it in a little bit of water as well. Then next, I'm going to pour in two cups of thickened cream or whipping cream. Just any type of cream will do. And then finally, seven ounces or about 400 grams of sweetened condensed milk. So there's definitely enough sugar in this, so you don't need to add extra sugar because this is sweet enough. And with a hand or stand mixer, we're going to whisk this up for about three minutes, three to four minutes, until it is nice and thick and creamy. And always start it off at a slow speed and then just work it up as it gets thicker. Because if you go full speed straight away, it's just going to splash everywhere. And that's, well, I'd rather not wear it, I'd rather eat it. Okay, so as you can see, it is now at a nice thick whip stage. So we're just going to turn it off for a second. We don't want to over whip this. We just want it nice and creamy like so. So lastly, all you have to do now is just pour in about half a cup of chocolate chips. Any chocolate chips will do. I'll leave that up to you, your personal favorite. Mix it through just for a couple of seconds. We don't want to overdo it. Just do the combined and we're done. Now all we have to do is simply place it into an airtight sealable container. Now, so we place it into the freezer for about a good three to four hours to completely set. And there we have it. And how creamy and delicious does this ice cream recipe look? If you love coffee, I guarantee you're going to love this. The combination of that co creamy coffee and those crunchy chocolate chips really do work so well as a texture and flavor. It's like a perfect harmony between the soft and the hard, between the coffee and the cream. And of course, if you want it stronger, you can add more coffee, or weaker, you can add less. That's the beautiful part about this recipe, you can make it as strong or as weak as you like. Because not everyone drinks coffee the same. But the only thing that really matters, once you work out how much coffee you like, is that this recipe tastes simply delish. Now, if you enjoyed having a hot coffee and a cookie on the side, let's put them both together and make something absolutely delicious. G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love my coffee. And this recipe just incorporates everything that I love. So join me today as I make my version of a dark coffee chocolate cookie. Okay, so for the first ingredient, we're going to use some coffee. Now always, when possible, try and use fresh coffee. Now of course, not everyone has fresh brewed coffee. A lot of people just prefer the instant coffee. So we want to go for say one shot or a teaspoon of our instant coffee. Okay, so there we have our shot of espresso. So we're just going to leave that aside to cool while we get started on the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so next into a mixing bowl, I'm going to place in one cup of softened butter. And I've just had this sitting at room temperature for about, about half an hour or so, just so it's nice and soft or so. Next on top of that, I'm going to add in half a cup of regular white plain sugar. And I'm going to follow that up with one cup of brown sugar. Now, of course, you can just use one and a half cups of regular sugar altogether, but I highly recommend the brown sugar because it really does add a lovely taste to these cookies. And we're going to mix these cookies up for about four to five minutes until they're nice and creamy and the sugar is completely dissolved. Okay, now that that's nice and fluffy, 
Next I've got two eggs, so I'm just going to add in one egg at a time. Then we're just going to mix that through. And once it's completely mixed through, then we're going to add in the second egg. Now you don't want to do them both at once, otherwise it can cause the mixture to clump up, which obviously is a fail, you'd have to start all over again. So now that the first egg is mixed in, we're just going to add in the second egg. And again, just let that mix through. Okay, once the eggs are mixed through, I'm going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then about a teaspoon of salt, which will help enhance all those flavors. Next, our shot of espresso or instant coffee, whichever one you prefer. Okay, next I'm going to add one teaspoon of bicarb soda or baking soda. Okay, we're just going to turn this down to a low now. We don't just go on too fast because next we're going to add in half a cup of cocoa powder now it's up to you if you want to use regular or dark darker the better so we're just going to let that mix through just so it's all nice and combined okay so once that's all combined now we're going to add in two cups of regular plain flour and again, we're going to mix this on low, just so we don't get a huge puff of flour going everywhere. Just until everything else is well combined. Okay, once it's relatively combined, we're just going to increase the speed just a little bit. Because we're not so worried about the flour going everywhere. And just make sure it's completely mixed through. Okay, finally everything has been completely mixed through, so the last thing we're going to add is two cups of dark chocolate chips. And we just want that to mix through just for a couple of seconds, that's all it takes. And it's done, it's that simple. So now we're going to place this into the fridge for a good half an hour, just to give it a chance for this mix to stiffen up a bit. Just makes it a lot easier to work with, so it's nice and firm. Okay, so once out of the fridge, it's firmed up nicely, so we're going to grab just a small amount at a time. Just work it into a ball and just place it onto a baking tray lined with some baking paper. And we're just going to just push it down slightly, just like that. And we're just going to continue on until we've made up all of our cookies. Now leave a bit of a gap between the two because they will still spread a little bit in the oven. So if you've ever made similar cookies before, you'll know that if you have them too close, you're just going to end up with one giant cookie. They don't have to wear gloves, I just like to wear gloves because it's a lot cleaner this way. Okay, so once we've made up our first batch, we're going to place this into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. And there we have it, incredibly simple, incredibly easy, and incredibly delicious chocolate and coffee cookies. They're incredibly simple to make. That's what I love about cookies. But these ones contain all the lovely flavors of chocolate and coffee all together in one neat little package. They're slightly crispy on the outside and nice and soft in the middle, which in my mind is a perfect cookie. But as long as you love coffee, then I guarantee when you bite into one of these, you'll know they taste simply delish. So please check out the links below to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Home Handy Hints channel. And please give this video a massive thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another mm -mm delicious recipe. Chocolate, caramel, and coffee. Can you honestly think of a better combination? Now to start off with, we're going to need some coffee. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can use instant coffee and you'll only need about a tablespoon's worth and you can just use that as a powder form that's fine or you can go my route and if you have fresh brewed coffee that you can make at home that's always preferable but it comes down to personal taste and what equipment that you have so instant coffee is perfectly fine but if you have an espresso machine well then make up a shot of espresso Okay, next I've got a pot on the stove on a medium to high heat. So to that I'm going to add in one cup of thickened cream or whipping cream or double cream. 
And then to that, our tablespoon or shot of espresso and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. And we're just going to keep on stirring this until it comes up to the boil. Now we don't want to boil it away, but we want it to start bubbling. So as soon as it gets to that bubbling stage, when it's just starting to boil, that's when we take it straight off the heat. Okay, so as you can see, it is just starting to boil away now, so take it straight off the heat. Okay, so while it's still hot, we're going to add four ounces or about 110 grams of chopped up chocolate or chocolate chips. And we're just going to stir that through until the chocolate is completely melted. So we're basically making a ganache. Now look at that, it's nicely mixed. And tell you what, it smells delicious too. So we have a nice smooth chocolate. Okay, next I've got a pot and a stove on a medium to high heat. So we're going to start off by adding one cup of sugar, followed by about three quarters of a cup of glucose syrup. It's also called corn syrup. To make it easier to pour, I've had it in the microwave for about 20 seconds, followed by a quarter cup of water. Next, we're going to stir it in until the sugar is completely dissolved and everything's nice and combined. And then we're going to bring it up to a high heat until it starts to boil. Okay, so it's nice and clear, everything's dissolved and it's starting to boil. Now just with a pastry brush, just brush around the outside, just with some water. It'll just stop any crystals from forming around the pot. And now we're going to continue to cook the sugar until it comes up to a nice amber colour and it starts to slightly smoke. And you'll also notice the bubbles have slowed down dramatically too. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to come up to that amber color. That means we take it straight off the heat. You can also tell the bubbles have slowed as well. Now we're just going to let it sit off the heat until we get to the desired level of caramelization. A lighter color will give you a sweeter caramel, while a darker color will give you more of a bitter caramel. At this point, it honestly just comes down to personal taste. Now, once you're happy with your caramelization, we're going to pour in our chocolate mixture. Then just give it a quick mix to combine. Now I've placed it back onto a high heat and we're going to continue to cook this up until it gets to 248 degrees Fahrenheit or about 130 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to use a candy thermometer. Now they're very cheap. You can also buy a normal thermometer as long as it gets to the right temperature. Now once at the right temperature, we're going to work quickly. We're going to add about three tablespoons of butter. Then give it a very good mix until the butter is completely dissolved in our mixture. And as soon as the butter is dissolved, take it straight off the heat. Now finally off the heat, we're going to add in a quarter teaspoon of salt and just give it a very good mix through. And this will really help enhance those lovely coffee, chocolate and caramel flavors. And last, I've got a baking pan here lined with a baking paper or parchment paper. So just simply pour in our caramel mixture. Now once in the pan, just simply place it into the fridge for about two to three hours to completely set. Okay, so our chocolate espresso caramel has completely set, as you can see. So it's just a simple matter of just Pulling it out of our baking tray. And simply just cutting it up to our desired shapes. And it cuts surprisingly easily. It's not overly sticky, which is good. And surprisingly, you can smell the caramel straight away. The caramel mixed with the coffee, I seriously cannot wait to try one of these. And would you look at that, it just looks like one big block of chocolate. But, let's see what they like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, that is really good. The coffee and caramel is a perfect combination. Now it's not an overly hard caramel, which is good. So it's not toffee, it's still soft, but very, very chewy. So honestly, it's turned out perfect. Now, especially when you mix my two favorite ingredients, caramel and coffee, it really is a perfect combination. So as you can see, it was very simple to make. They can make it thicker than this if you like. I don't think you want to go much thinner. At the moment, it kind of looks like, you know, an after dinner mint type size, which is perfect. So it's good to share with the family. It's good to share at a party. It's good to have after a coffee. It's good to have during a coffee. Or it's just a general treat during the day or in the afternoon after a long day. But no matter when you have it, either way, it's going to taste simply delish. Now, if you love iced coffee, then you have to try this recipe because it's the only way to make it if you want it to taste simply delish. G'day and welcome to Todd's Kitchen. Who doesn't love coffee? There are so many ways to prepare it, especially the hot way. Everyone knows the hot way, but there's actually another way and some might even say a better way. It's called cold brew coffee. It takes a lot longer, but it tastes delish. So join me today as I show you how to make cold brew coffee. You want to start off with some freshly roasted coffee beans and preferably freshly ground coffee beans. Now, of course, if you don't have a grinder at home, feel free just to buy the pre-ground coffee beans from the shops. And you want them ground between, say, a plunger and a filter stage. So you want a rather coarse. You really don't want espresso because that'll just... Honestly, it doesn't work as well. You want it the thicker it is, the better it works. Because you will have these soaking for up to 24 hours. So you really want to give it a chance for all that water to infuse through those lovely coffee. And you want a ratio of one cup of coffee, ground coffee, to eight cups of water. Okay, so you want a good airtight jug that's been completely washed out. So I'm going to add in one cup of our coarse coffee grinds. And then to that, I'm going to add eight cups of cold water. Preferably filtered if you can, it's always best. But as long as it's cold, you'll be just fine. Now the reason why we make cold brew coffee for things like say iced coffee, if you're using hot coffee and you're diluted onto ice, you get more of a bitter taste. Because of the intense and rapid extraction of flavors from the beans by the hot water. But with cold brew coffee, because it takes about 18 to 24 hours, and that's how long we're going to leave it in this jar for, you get a much better gentler infusion process that produces a drink of lower acidity which is why cold brew coffee is naturally sweeter and perfect for things like say iced coffee. And you also get far less dilution when you pour this over ice as opposed to say hot coffee. So we're going to leave this for a good 18 to 24 hours, preferably 24 hours. Okay, so it's been 24 hours and our coffee is done. Now I'm going to filter this two separate ways and each way will get rid of all the extra grounds. So first I have a bowl here with just a regular sifter. So just pour our mixture right in and this will get all the big bits out. Well, there's larger coffee grounds just like that. And as you can see, we've also got just lots sitting on the bottom here. Now don't throw this in the bin, just put it on top of the garden. It's great fertilizer. And our second filtration is a coffee filter. And this will just get rid of the extra fine particles. So just carefully pour our coffee through our coffee filter. And as you can see, it has trapped all those finer bits of ground coffee. So we'll have nothing but lovely tasting iced coffee. And all you have to do is get a glass with some ice. Now you can use any recipe that you like. I'm just going to add just some milk and some of our iced coffee. Ooh, yum, I'm looking forward to this. And there we have our very easy, very delicious cold brew coffee. Now, as you saw, it is very simple to make at home and it is so much better than using the hot brewed coffee when making such drinks like iced coffee because it just works and tastes so much better. And the best thing is, as long as it's kept in an airtight container, the coffee itself will keep in the fridge for up to a month. So you can make a large batch of it and have one every now and then. And of course, don't forget, you can make up your own iced coffee recipe, add a bit of sugar if you like, add some caramel, it's completely up to you. But apart from the fact that it's going to last up to a month, this ice brewed coffee recipe is going to taste simply delish.
Okay, so we're gonna start off with our coffee. Now I'm gonna use a shot of espresso. Now you can also use the dry coffee, but you wanna make up roughly 60 mils, which is one shot. So into a glass, we're gonna pour in our coffee. Then our sweetened condensed milk. And we're just gonna give that a quick stir, just so it's combined. So once it's been completely combined, we're just gonna to top it off with some ice. Just until you fill up the cup. And there we have it. A very simple and easy, yet extremely tasty Vietnamese coffee. Now to give this a try. Oh, that is so good. Now Vietnamese coffee is supposed to be very sweet, and this is, but with the added taste of the coffee and being chilled with that ice, this Vietnamese coffee tastes simply delish. Okay, so we're gonna start off by using a standard size coffee mug. So into that coffee mug, we're going to place in three tablespoons of self-raising flour. Now, if you don't have self-raising flour, just use three tablespoons of normal flour with about a quarter tablespoon of baking powder. Then to that, a teaspoon of your favorite coffee powder. Then two tablespoons of cocoa powder or drinking chocolate, it's up to you. Then two tablespoons of sugar. And just give it a quick mix around so it's well combined. Okay, next I'm gonna add in one egg that I've just lightly beaten up. Then two tablespoons of milk. Then two tablespoons of olive oil. And you can use vegetable oil if you like. And then finally half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now mix that through until it's well combined. Now not all the microwaves are the same. You may need to add or reduce the time by five seconds depending on how it cooks. But basically once it's all wibbly wobbly timey wimey just like this, you can place it into the microwave for about 90 seconds and then it should be ready. Okay, so I've just taken it out of the microwave and look at that. It has risen perfectly. Now there's one final step. I'm just gonna get some icing sugar. I'm just gonna give it a light dust just on top. Okay, so I've let this cool down just for about a minute or two. Now it's time to give it a try. Oh, look at that. Look how nice and fluffy it is just inside. And it smells delicious too. It really, really does. Okay. Oh, that is fantastic. That is a perfect combination of chocolate and coffee. If you love coffee, if you love chocolate, then you should not pass up to give this a go because it is just fantastic. It really, really is. It is lovely and fluffy and warm and it is super simple and easy to make. Of course, you put all that together with the coffee and the chocolate taste. This mug recipe tastes simply delish. Okay, so to start this coffee recipe off, we're going to start with the main ingredient, and of course, that's coffee. Now you can use the freeze-dried stuff if that's all you have, and that'll work just fine. But we want enough for one standard shot of coffee. Okay, so next we're going to use some vodka. So into a glass, we're going to pour in one shot's worth. Then we're gonna fill it up, say about three quarters of the way with some light cream or milk. And just top it off with a couple of ice cubes. Now obviously this isn't the type of coffee you'd wanna have before work, but when you're at home and you're not going to drive, say around mid afternoon, it'll be a perfect drink, but let's give it a try. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in flavor country and it's a big country that really is fantastic. That lovely, lovely coffee mixed with that shot of vodka. <laughs> this coffee tastes simply delish. Okay, so we're going to start off with the main ingredient and that is our coffee. Now you can do it any way you like. If you have an espresso machine like this, you want the equivalent of two shots of coffee. But of course you can use any type that you like. You can also use the freeze dried instant type stuff that you can buy from the shops. And you can make it as strong as you like. 
Okay, so now that we've brewed our coffee, I'm gonna place this in the fridge for about half an hour, just so it can completely chill. Okay, now that our coffee has cooled down in the fridge, into a mixing bowl, I'm going to pour in 600 mils of thickened cream. It's also called whipping cream or double cream or heavy cream. Now using a hand mixer or a stand mixer, we're gonna whip this up until soft peaks start to form. Okay, so we now have some lovely soft peaks. Okay, so next we're going to pour in 395 grams or one tin of sweetened condensed milk. And then on top of that, our coffee. Okay, so now we're gonna mix that through until it's well combined and slightly thicker. And there we have it. Now that is nice and fluffy and that is exactly how you want it. Okay, so all you have to do now is just pour it into a container that comes with a lid that you can seal in place in the freezer. Okay, so you're gonna place the lid on and we're gonna place this into the freezer for about six to eight hours or preferably overnight. Okay, and there we have it, our lovely ice cream coffee. So it was only three ingredients and it was very simple to make and you didn't need a churner as well. But, but the best thing is, I wanna see what this tastes like. Oh, that is so good. Now, as a lot of you would already know, I love coffee and who doesn't love ice cream? So this really is a match made in heaven. I don't usually do this, but I'm going in for a second taste because this is really good. This coffee ice cream truly does taste simply delish. Now, first of all, we're going to need one shot of espresso coffee. Now, if you don't have an espresso machine, just simply dissolve one tablespoon of coffee in a little bit of hot water. Now that we have our espresso coffee, I'm going to pour that into a mixing bowl. And then to that, I'm going to pour in half a cup or one stick of melted butter, followed by two eggs, one cup of sugar, and a pinch of salt. Now using a hair mixer or a stem mixer, we're going to beat this through until the sugar's dissolved. Okay, now that our sugar is dissolved, we're going to pour in about a teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a cup of self-raising flour, or plain flour with a dash of baking powder, and one third a cup of cocoa powder. Now just simply mix it through until it's combined. Now finally I have a lined baking tray. So just simply pour our brownie mixture into our tray. Now we're going to place this into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Now I've taken our brownie out of the oven and I have it cooling down on a wire rack. So while it's cooling, we're going to make the topping. So into a mixing bowl, I'm going to place in a quarter cup of Nutella. Now what I've done is I've put this Nutella in the microwave just to soften it up for 20 seconds. And then to that, I'm going to add another shot of espresso. Now just give it a quick whisk until it's completely combined. And next into a separate bowl, I'm going to place in about a cup of thickened or whipping cream. Now simply whip this away until you form stiff peaks. Okay, now that we've formed stiff peaks, we're going to grab our coffee and Nutella mixture and we're just going to slowly pour it in until it's all combined. Okay, lastly, our brownie has completely cooled down. So we're just going to put our lovely Nutella and espresso topping just on top. Now we're just going to place this in the fridge for about half an hour just to set it up a little bit. And then it's ready to cut up. Oh, and look at those. Don't they look lovely? Now just to dress them up a little bit more, I've just put some shredded dark chocolate on top. Now these really are an incredible indulgence, especially with a mixture of that coffee and Nutella. But with a name like Nutella Espresso Mousse Brownies, you know, with all those words together, these are gonna taste simply delish. Okay, so we're gonna start this cake recipe off with a pot on the stove on a medium heat. So to that we're going to add in 250 grams of butter, followed by 200 grams of dark chocolate, and one and a half cups of strong coffee. Now we're just going to continuously stir this over this medium heat until everything is completely melted and well combined. 
Okay, once all melted, I'm going to place in two cups of sugar and just give it a good stir until it is completely dissolved. And once it's completely dissolved, just take it straight off the heat. Okay, so I've just transferred our mixture to a mixing bowl. So today I'm going to place in one and a half cups of self-raising flour, followed by a quarter cup of cocoa powder. And we're going to give that a good mix around for a couple of minutes until everything is well combined. Okay, once mixed through, just add in two eggs and simply mix it through until the eggs are well combined. Okay, so we're just going to simply pour this into a lined springform pan. And we're going to place this into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. And you know what's ready when you tap it on top and it springs back. Now I've taken the cake out of the oven and it's cooling on a wire rack. So while it's cooling, we're just going to make a simple ganache. So I have uh, 200 grams of dark chocolate here and I'm just going to add about a cup worth of cream. And now we're just going to place this into the microwave for 30 seconds at a time, stirring each time until it's completely melted. Okay, so all you have to do now is just simply pour on your chocolate ganache. Now that certainly is a very easy cake to make, but it's also a perfect cake if you're having guests over for a coffee. So it's definitely nothing too fancy, but it does taste fantastic. And you don't have to use it all at once. Assuming you don't put the ganache on, you can also freeze it for a few months. So you can bring out a few slices at a time. And then just simply add the ganache on, and when you serve it up with a cup of coffee, it's going to taste simply delish. Now this is going to be a three layer bar, so we're going to start by making the base. So we're going to start off by using a food processor. Into the food processor, I'm going to place in one cup of raw cashew nuts, followed by one cup of pitted dates, and two tablespoons of instant coffee. And we're going to process this until everything is nice and fine and well combined. Now as a little tip, if you find that it's not coming together properly, if it's say not very sticky, feel free just to add say one or two tablespoons of water just to moisten up a little bit, just to get to that sticky stage where it's going to stay together. So I've just placed it into a line tray and just with the back of a spoon, just to even it out. And we're just going to push it all down just so it's nice and firm. So we can create that nice firm base. Okay, so for our next middle layer, which is our cream layer, we're going to add in one can of coconut cream, followed by another couple of tablespoons of ground coffee, and about four tablespoons of maple syrup. And we're going to give it a good whisk until everything is well combined and the coffee is dissolved. And once it's all mixed together, we're going to place it on top of our base. Now just simply place this in the freezer for about half an hour, and then in half an hour we're going to work on our final layer. Now while that's in the freezer, for our third and final layer into a container, I'm going to place in three tablespoons of melted coconut oil, followed by three tablespoons of cocoa powder, and three tablespoons of maple syrup. And give that a very good mix around until it's well combined. Okay, so I've just taken it out of the freezer. Just make sure it's relatively set on top. And all we have to do now is just pour on our chocolate mixture. Now once it's been completely covered, we're going to place it back into the freezer for a good two hours to completely set. And basically when you're ready to serve it, just bring it out 20 minutes earlier just to give it a chance to soften up. And there we have our delicious coffee cream bars. So there's no added processed sugar, but they still have a lovely sweet taste. And they're also vegan friendly too. And to spruce it up just a little bit, add a little bit of Baileys to the middle cream part. But whether you have this with a cup of coffee or without, either way, it's going to taste simply delish. And if you're going to keep this long term in the freezer, just make sure it's in a sealed container. So thank you for watching this episode of Todd's Kitchen. As always, I'll leave a list of ingredients down below, as well as links to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Home Handy Hints channel. And please do me a massive favor by giving this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another delicious recipe.